in church? So we're going to be in Ecclesiastes today, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And so today we're going to talk about something that I struggle with personally, something that uh, I want to master. I want to be a master of this thing, but uh, I find myself uh, far from that, you know. Uh, But I, something that... That used to be easy for me, to be honest with you. When I first became a Christian, this just seemed like it just came flowing out of me naturally, uh, and I really liked it. But somewhere along the way, things like worry and stress and, I don't know, a little touch of anxiety here and there and things like that just robbed this from me. Um, and so part of what I want to do from the very beginning is be because I just want to, like, repent, uh, confess this, because I want more than anything to master this. I mean, to really have this flowing out of me, to be a great example to all of you, to my family. Uh, and I just want the, the results of what this can bring. Anybody curious about what we're going to talk about today? I, I've... I have someone in my life that inspires me in this, and not that she is like, you know, the guru of it uh, by any means, but she's just so much more advanced than I am, Uh, just so much better at it than I am. So she inspires me as I just watch her, and of course, this is my wife. Um, She she just does a great job of what we're going to talk about today, Uh, and I appreciate so much. I I think it's, the subject that we're going to talk about is so important as we talk about, you know, this, this umbrella uh, thought of discovery, and as we talk about, you know, this like this path that we are on, each of us are on our path, um, and as we think about that, this is just one of the things that comes to my, my mind about something important for us to talk about as we're along the path, something that, because this is such a, a very vital part of of being really uh, satisfied and fulfilled, you know, along this past journey. So what is it that we are going to talk about? It is this. Being people who learn to live in the moment. I think that is such a valuable, important thing to live in the moment. Don't live in the future. Don't live in the past. Because when you, when you're, when you're, Going through just any day, every day, and you're always, your mind is so preoccupied with what has happened or it's preoccupied about what is coming, we miss out on so much about what is here and right before us now, and it robs us of so much. So just the ability to stop and smell the flowers, that's one of the things I think brought me to this thought as just looking at this beautiful you know, painting that is, uh, that is here, and he put these little flowers along our path. And, and as spring is coming up, maybe that's part of what brought this to my thinking. I don't know. But I think this is such an important conversation to have while we are on, you know, our path of life is just have this ability to always, you know, smell the flowers, you know, stop and smell the roses, as we used to say. To not be in such a hurry for the next stage in life or the next thing in life, uh, but just to absorb what is right here present with us right now. In fact, you can even practice this like right now. Don't be thinking about what you're going to eat after church, right? Don't be thinking about what you're going to go do and what you need to hurry and go do. Just absorb what you have right now. Just let God just fill you up with his word and his thoughts and just take this in for a moment here. You know, in her, in her memoir, Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth Gilbert, she writes about a friend who, who never, she never sees the beauty in the, the here and now. She never, you know, whenever she's at a beautiful place, she always says this in just kind of a panic. This is so beautiful. I, I want to come back here someday. 
And this is what she writes. She says, it takes all of my uh, persuasive powers, says Gilbert, to try to convince her she is here right now. Right now. She doesn't have to plan to come back. She is here to just take it in now and enjoy it now. You know, often we are so trapped in our thoughts about, I think, you know, the future or the past that we just miss out on so much of the here and now and the blessings that are here and now and the joy that is here and now. You know, like so, so often I, I find myself drinking my coffee in a to-go mug. You? You know, like I don't have time to just enjoy it. I just got to get it to go. Or eating the cookie as you're doing your project, whatever it would be, you know, or on your way out the door uh, kind of thing. Instead of just taking and savoring the moment and enjoying that. You know, uh, uh, Sonia Labonsky, she's a psychiatrist at the University of California, and she wrote this book, The How of Happiness. She writes this, this could be while you're eating a pastry, taking a shower, basking in the sun, or just savoring a success, or savoring a song. But usually, when you are doing this right, she says, you are, uh, it, it involves all of the senses. So let me ask you something about that. And this is super important. Who created the senses? Who created the ability to taste and to smell, and to see, and to touch, and to hear. Who created those? God did. And can you imagine life without those? I mean, my mom, I took her up to Kansas City. Uh, her, you know, her and my dad and I went up to Kansas City to have her eyes checked. I don't think she's been up there for a couple years, you know, since all this COVID stuff. And she got a great report, and we were just super rejoicing that her pressures are down and things are maintaining. You know, she's not gaining anything, unfortunately, but everything is staying the same, which is just a blessing. Um, but when you lose one of those, you realize what you are losing and the impact and just how valuable and awesome they are. But God created these things. You know, Apple didn't create them. They wouldn't even be able to do such a thing. Now, they, they uh, 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 create things to, you know, make money off of those things uh, that God created. But God created these things. And, and for us just to think for a moment why he created them and how powerful they are and how wonderful they are and how, how to really, like, absorb the things around us with them. You know, when there are some subjects or some people who were in a study, and, and they, in this study they were just instructed and, and taught for the next week or two, I don't know how long the study went on, but to just take every one of their little moments that they have and to just savor, use this word savor, savor the moment. You just spend it in mindfulness about what they are doing. So whether they were eating a meal and just pausing and not letting other things distract you, but just focusing on the meal, right, and focusing on the taste and, and just going through that moment uh, with just this concept, or whether you were drinking tea or whether you were even just walking to the bus stop, but just savoring the, the walk, you know, and just the things that are going on around you and not letting future distract you or the past distract you for the moment. And then they were to get back and to just respond on that. And what they found is that overwhelmingly every one of them intensified in their happiness and just their, their sense of joy, um, sense of positive emotions they were talking about, just doing that exercise for a week or two. I'm going to have um, uh, them pull up a verse. Diane's going to pull up a verse here. And just before she does, though, I just want to say something about it. But I, I'm just going to have you read it. And maybe she, I don't know how it will be up on the screen, but maybe she'll just 
pull it up a couple, through a couple times as we read through it slowly. But I really want you just to process it. I want you to meditate on it just for a second, okay? So I just want your thoughts, you and the Holy Spirit, to just kind of walk through this. I want to say this just as I, before I do, though, that Solomon is the author of these words. And, of course, with the stamp of the approval of God behind it, of course, but, uh, and the Holy Spirit's help. But, but Solomon, in all of his wisdom, and his wisdom came from God, but in all of his wisdom, says these words. And I just want you to meditate on them and just the power of them and what they are trying to say. So let's just do that for a moment here. Okay, let's um, go back to that very first one, the Ecclesiastes 5, 18 through 20. Actually, uh, verse 20, uh, if we can go to that, Diane. It says, at the end of what we were just thinking about, it says, For he will not much remember the days of his life because God gives, keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. For he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. I can't help but think that that's like, you know, when you take a a kid to something, Disney World, you know, go get ice cream, I don't know, whatever it would be, go hunting. And they just feel like that time just rushed by. You know, you just kind of get lost in it. Or as an adult, whatever, you're doing something that you just absolutely love, whether it's gardening or, or you know, working with the cows or hunting or watching a ball game or whatever it would be. And it just seems like, wow, that happened so quick. Like you just got lost in the moment. And then there's things that you do, you know, that this seems like it drags on and on and on. And it's because that there's just not much joy in it. But I, it, when he says here, for he will not much remember the days of his life because God gives, keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. It's just to learn to live in the moment, to, to realize that there is so much that, that God wants us to enjoy. How does living in the moment make people happier? Instead of living in the future, living in the past. Because I think most negative thoughts, most things that rob us from that joy that Solomon is talking about is, is because of, of focusing on the past or focusing on the future. And you know how it is. Most things that you are focused on in the future haven't even happened yet. But you have a negative approach or content. I mean, like, like it's just, it's not, you're, you're not thinking of the positive way things will turn out. You're always thinking of how it's the negative part of how they might turn out. It's like Mark Twain when he says, I have known a great many troubles, but most of them never happened. Right? I mean, it's, seriously, that's like, and so, so often we're just sitting here and, Any moment of time, then we're just focusing on something that's not ever happened and probably will never happen. My dad used to always say that 90% of the things that you're worried about is not going to take place. So stop worrying. And 
Easier said than done for some of us, right? But that's what he's talking about here is he's trying to get us to just focus on the things that God has laid before us. Behold, he says, what I have seen to be good and fitting, what I have learned through all of my wisdom and toil and trial is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all of the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept them, his lot, and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil. This is the gift of God. It's as if Solomon is making us a little list here. And he's saying, eat and drink and find enjoyment in, number one, your toil. Like, your labor. What, what your hands have, are, are, you know, finding to do. This is your lot. Be satisfied with your work. You know, recently, our two kids, uh, Mike and Brinkley, you know, they moved to North Carolina. We went out there and saw them uh, last week. And but uh, they've been out there for, well, since August. You know, they got married at, uh, August 12th and uh, started their jobs like the next week. They had their, these jobs lined out. And, man, they had, a, they had a whole lot of ducks in a row lined up there. And it just was bang, 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 you know, uh, finishing up. But they, they worked uh, where they met was in Joplin at um, Freeman. They both worked in mental health over there, and that's how they got acquainted with each other. Uh, Brinkley actually went to school with Carrie, and so Carrie already was familiar with Brinkley. Um, but they loved it. Mike and Brinkley loved mental health, and, and they thought this is just their pursuit, right? And so as they're dreaming about, you know, life together and getting married and things like this, they had this plan of moving out to North Carolina. There's a lot of things into that. I won't get into that, but it's all romantic type stuff, right? Um, and, uh, and so they had, you know, started looking at these jobs, and they secured this, this job, and, uh, and they moved out there, got married, and started this. And anyway, as such things happened, it wasn't quite what they anticipated, um, they did all their research, but this place, the facility that they were working at was just not what they were hoping. Everything else was exactly what they were hoping. You know, beach life and their apartments and life beginning together and just all the excitement. So here they have this job. So Lori and I, when we learned, you know, pretty quick that it wasn't Brinkley's cup of tea. Micah was like, well, I can put up with it, you know, it's okay. Micah, Micah is, is definitely set on, you know, mental health, you know, that, that avenue being just an avenue that he loves. He, I don't know why he loves it, but he loves it. And, uh, and so he, he really wants to stay in that. Brinkley, on the other hand, is just like, you know, this is not really kind of what I would really want to do. But as we knew that they were unsatisfied, Lori and I began to have these conversations with them. We were just like, you know, things basically comes down to this. Look, you guys are young. You have no debt. You have no kids. You have everything that you have could be put in a little car and moved to another place. I mean, you know, this is the perfect time for you guys to just explore different things, for you to really find something you love to do. Because at some point, when your roots get established, this, make, this is such a difficult thing to just change occupations and change what you do. And God does not want you to just go through life, blah, I don't want to get up, I don't want to do this, why am I doing this? He wants you to get up with some joy in your heart and believe in what you're doing. And what you're contributing to mankind and stuff of this sort. So these are conversations that parents are having with their kids, right? And so we are encouraging this. Wasn't quite anticipating what the next step was, and that is they call us up. Hey, guess what? We quit our jobs. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> but what was reassuring with that is they planned this, okay? They had saved up a pretty big uh, nest egg, a really big nest egg, actually, 
because they worked all this overtime. I mean, they worked themselves like crazy, and they had this big old nest egg, and so they could be, you know, carefree and just wandering through life for quite a while um, and pay all their bills and everything. And so they already know what they, even when they quit, they already know what they were going to do. Brinkley already knows where she's, she's going to go get this certificate to do uh, uh, something in, that she just really feels fond about. Micah is going to uh, do whatever he needs to do to get her, you know, settled in what her new uh, direction is. And then he wants to go back to school and get his master's uh, because he wants to be in charge. The only thing he didn't like about the facility is who was in charge. <laughs> Uh, is basically what it amounts to. And uh, so I just love it. And here's what I love is because I want, just like you would want for your kids and you would want for yourself, is whatever your toil is, is that it's something that you love. And don't you know that that's what Solomon is trying to say here? It is, is everyone, well, let me back up just a smidge here. In verse 18, Behold, what I have found out in life, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and to find enjoyment and all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days that he had of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. And so that's number one. That's the first thing that I think, living in the moment, that we just... We do what we enjoy doing. Now, not every day is going to be that. Not every week is going to be that. But for the most part, seeing purpose and having an, a passion and a desire for what we do and move in that direction. I do believe that you can not necessarily love what you do but you do it so you can do what you love. Uh, and I think that there's some of that. But this is just part of, I think, what Solomon, this is just a smart man. And this is what he would share with his son and what he would share with his daughter and what we tried to instill in our kids because we see the importance of this. Now, next week we're really going to get into this next one, because it's almost like an elephant in the room. I have no doubt, or we'll just call it the elephant in the verse. And there's no way, because of time constraint, I was trying to figure out, I, it's like, Andrew, my sermon's getting way too long, and I think people are tired of that, right? Um, so we're going to make this kind of at least a two-part, maybe a three- or four-part uh, little series, but, uh, but we're going to get into this deeper, so don't let me lose you in the midst of this here but the second thing that he brings out here, he says, everyone to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. Now, like I said, we're going to get into this more deeply next week. But it can, and the reason I have to say that is because this can be easily misunderstood. One could read this and think that Solomon is promoting wealth and materialism and power. Like, if you really want to be satisfied and find joy in life, then go get as much as you can and collect it all. You know, just like the old uh, bumper sticker, he who you know, gathers the most toys wins, so to speak. This is not what Solomon is talking about. That would be very contradictory to everything that Jesus talks about. And we know that that can't be. And, he, and we would know, as we, especially when we look at it next week, if you read before these verses, before 18 comes, this chapter 5 previous, or even the whole chapter 6, which isn't very long, you would know right away that that's not what he's talking about here. So what is he talking about? Well, he's talking about no matter what your lot is in life, no matter, no matter if you're at this level financially or at this level financially or at this level financially or at this level financially, you all just enjoy what you have. 
And what I have found, I'm not a world traveler, but I have been to Haiti. And what I have found is that people in Haiti can listen to this verse and glean everything from it. You can, you can take all the, the prosperity that you have and all of the possessions that you have and all the power that you have and find joy in that. You don't have to go to the next level or the next level or have what the next guy has in order. Like, I can't be satisfied without going to the next place. Rather, he's saying, be satisfied with what you have and be satisfied within what you have. You know, Sol- Solomon is such a smart man. <laughs> There's a plaque that was in the, the house that we were staying in in North Carolina that, that said something I think that brought this up, like helped me a little bit, and it just simply said this, it isn't the years in your life that count, but it is the life in your years. And I just, I read that I probably about 30 times while we were sitting there, and just meditating on it and contemplating it and then when I found this scripture I was just like I think that's a little bit what Solomon is saying here like he's he's just saying it isn't the years in your life it isn't the the money it isn't the possessions that count it is it is the life within those things it is just having life you know John 10 10 Jesus said this right The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. The thief is always going to try to get you to live in the past or in the future and always just wrap you up with worry. But I've come that you may have life and have it to the abundance. And Jesus has taken care of our future and he has taken care of our past, I think, so we can live in the present. We can live carefree in the sense that we can wake up this morning and realize that all of my sins are forgiven. And we can go to bed with peace just knowing that I am right with God, not because of anything I've done, but because of what he has done. And it just allows us to just absorb everything in the moment and to see how rich we truly are. Nicholas Thomas Wright, Thomas Wright who is an author that I really enjoy reading, but he said this about uh, John 10.10. 10. He says, the, the promise of full life, full to overflowing, is as relevant to us today as it is then. The modern Western world has discovered how unsatisfying materialism is, and it is looking for something more, something beyond. Many thieves, thieves have told us lies and have deceived the sheep, stolen them and left them for dead. The call today to Jesus, true sheep, is to listen to his voice and find in him and him alone the life which is overflowing life indeed. And don't you know that Solomon, not only is he wise, but he had the ability to try everything under the sun. And nothing was satisfying to him besides this wisdom that he has given us today. It's getting up early in the morning and just literally intentionally watching the sun rise and just acknowledging the beauty and just soaking in the things. When I got up out of bed today, I got up out of bed and the sun was just coming up through the window and it's because of what I was been focusing on, because it is my desire to master this so much better than I ever have, that I just paused for a moment, and I wouldn't even have noticed it a week ago. Well, probably a week ago I would have, but a couple weeks ago. But I just paused, and I just watched it. And the chickens were out there just pecking along, and the birds were flying, and it just made me think, oh, man, it's time. You know, it's time to get out my little sound system thing and to call in the birds because it's spring. You know, they are calling to each other these calls. And you can call in like painted bunnings. And you wouldn't even know that they even exist around here unless you do this. And I've taken so many pictures of these things because I just put my thing out there and here they come. Or just the the indigo bunnings, you know, those, those blue ones and things that sort. And so my mind was just going to that. And literally... 
It enriched me just that quickly, just that moment. Having coffee with your favorite person in the moment, but you would have to get up a little early to maybe do this because we have schedules and demands. But just doing that and taking the moment to do that, eating Sunday lunch with your family and just capturing the moment and actually being in the moment Instead of like me, always trying to figure out the next problem or the next sermon or the, you know, when I, when I'm, and then I end up missing out on what is literally going on right in front of me. And the crazy, old crazy phones that we have rob us so much of what's just going on <laughs> around us. I was just thinking the other day when I was going out to burn trash, I'm marching out to burn trash and that is like what I have to do, I have to get this done. And I felt kind of rushed. And all of a sudden, because of what I've been studying, I just looked up and I, there was a sky up there I would have just completely missed out on. And I'm just, what I'm trying to convey is hopefully what I think that Solomon's trying to convey here and just, just taking it all in. From what we do to just using our senses and, and our location and what God has granted us. When we were at the ocean, Lori and I, we were getting up early and, and just as, you know, it was barely light enough to get across the way to the ocean. And, and we were getting there to watch the sunrise and find the treasures that the ocean brought up. And, and it was just always spectacular. But the reason you do it every morning is because every morning is different. I mean, I know it's crazy, but... Every morning, there's something new in that sand. Every morning, the sky is just a little different. The light is a little different. I don't know, but it just seems like it just you can't get enough of it. And I, I re- remember as we were standing out there, and I was videotaping uh, the sunrise just so I could remember you know, that moment in time. I just realized there's a whole bunch of us had the same idea, just scattered all the way down the beach. You know, some of them were walking, and when I was videoing one morning, this young uh, group, it was a couple guys and a girl, or, so, or two girls and a guy, I don't remember, I wasn't really paying attention to them, but I know they were young, like college age, and he just made the comment as I'm videoing, which he messed up my, because I didn't want any audio of people, but, but he says, isn't that beautiful, right? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was, I didn't probably sound like on the video, <laughs> But it was, right? But I'm just looking at all these people, and I'm just thinking, you know, all of a sudden I just had this thought in my head, like, we're all here absorbed in the same thing. And yet this guy probably makes like five times what I make. This person probably doesn't even have a house to go to. You know, like there is so much, and we're all enjoying the same thing and just soaking it in, something that God has provided and it, brought, and it brought me so much just joy and stress relief and happiness in that moment. And it did them too, obviously. That's why they're there. And it had nothing to do with how much any particular person had. And I think that's, that's what Solomon is talking about. But we will tap into this more next week. Sometimes God gives you a song to inspire you. And, and I think that music is awesome, but there's times like when I'll come across a song and because it is saying something that my spirit needs to just like really absorb, it just becomes my song for a while. Most of the time it is like, you know, a God-inspired person writing and singing a God-inspired song. But every once in a while it's a secular person that's not God-inspired, but still writing something that is meant for me, and, and I, it's so easy for me to, to make that a spiritual uh, something that goes on in my life. And so I came across one this, this week, and if I, wouldn't have come acro- if I would have come across it sooner, I probably would have seen if Matthew would be interested in playing it, but I didn't want to put that burden on him. But, but I am going to play it here just for a moment. There's, there's the words... And, I, and I'm, not, I don't, I'm not doing this to highlight the person, so don't get me wrong. I'm doing this to highlight the song and the words. So let's listen to it for a moment here. Are 
you gotta turn it up a little bit. If this life is one act, why do we lay all these traps? We put them right in our path when we just wanna be free. I will not waste my days making up all. I think it's awesome. And I, I know that this is like a feel-good sermon, and sometimes, you know, people are like, well, we're not supposed to have feel-good sermons. Uh, but you know that Jesus came for us to be able to walk down a path without all of the burden. The world should see more than any other place that they look, believers in Jesus feeling carefree and just having the the right and the ability to live in the moment, to not live in the past, not live in the future, but just to absorb it. You know that that's part of what Jesus was saying when he says, I came to give you life. Part of that is eternal life and life to the full, meaning that you can start it right now. No matter where I'm going, he says, I know I'm already home. And I know that that's not what he meant, but that's the way I take it is that I, I already have eternal life and that starts now it doesn't start when i die it's, this is part of living in it right now and just being free jesus says i came to set you free and free indeed you are and we just have 
We have so many reasons as believers in Jesus to live in the moment and to not let the thief come and to rob us because he's got us living in the past or the present. You know, one more thought, and that is, you know, those mornings that Lori and I get up, the routine would be I go make coffee, she get ready, and then as the coffee's brewing for the rest of the family that hadn't gotten up yet, and for us when we come back, we headed to the beach. And we were, the first morning, we just went out to the beach, turned left, and just started walking. You know, it was barely light, and so the sun hadn't come up yet, and we're just looking through things. Pretty much the first ones, there was a couple others that were there. They were to the right. That's why we went left. And we just start walking. And as we're walking, the sun eventually comes up. I pause, take my little video, and Lori kind of just slowly meanders on down the way, looking at all of the treasures that the sea has brought to us that day. And, and just the sand, and the rippling of the sand it was just really cool how the waves just leave that in its place. And the noise, if I could just bring the noise to you, I would. And, and the smell... Our, all of our senses were just being, I mean, you think, well, not taste. Well, no, just lick your lips and see if that's not there too. I mean, every sense that God has given us is just being absorbed through the morning. And so we're just walking, 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 walking. Eventually, I, I'm just like walked out. Like, maybe we should head back. And Lori's like, yeah, we should. And coffee sounds good, blah, blah, blah. And so we start heading back. Well, we didn't realize it because we were just absorbed in all of this. But we had walked over a mile. And the only reason I know that is because when I got back, my watch told me so. Um, I mean, it didn't tell me I walked a mile. It told me we walked over two miles, you know. So, um, but when we turned around and came back, there was just all these houses on the beach. Boom, boom, boom. It looks like the same guy built every one of them right? I mean, they just all look the same. But what were we focused on? We were focused on everything God created, you know, besides a couple of things that the sea vomited up, like, you know, some kind of rope or something. But, uh, but for the most part, everything God created. So we weren't paying attention to any landmarks or anything. And so when we turned around, we didn't even know where we were going. I mean, we know we were heading in the right direction, but we didn't know where our house was, and we didn't know how far we had walked. And and the, we weren't right on the beach. There's all these houses right on the beach. We were the next row back. And so it's just like from here to John. I mean, it wasn't much of a walk, but we were on the second row back. So we had to know what house to walk between uh, to get to our house. And so we were just like lost. And we walked, 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 walked. And Lori's like, where do we go? I said, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we found it, obviously, because we're here. Uh, but that's not the moral. I'm not going to tell you how because that's not the moral of the story. The moral of the story is, is just simply this. I so often get that flipped around. I'm so often, I'm paying attention to all the man-made stuff around me and all of the man-made worry because like 90% of it never happens or, or it's stuff like that, right? That... I, I get lost and I, and I don't because I don't pay attention to the things that are just that, that God has given me. And I just miss out on so much. And I've just decided to, to do my very best to change this around. I, I love when, when Lori is with family, she is with family. You know what I mean? If you have somebody in your life like this, you know. Like when, they, when somebody's having a conversation, they are like in that conversation. They're not sort of trying to stay in the conversation, but yet they're in some other world over here looking down, you know, in the future or in the past or something. They're in the moment. And I love that about Lori. She does that in so many different ways. And I just want that because I, I think that that's where joy comes from. And don't you know that that's what God wants from us? He, he wanted to, this is just one of the blessings that Jesus wanted to give us. And as we're walking this path, just to be able to really have that is realizing, it's a person that realizes the blessings that God has given us. And that's one of the things Solomon says there. These are gifts of God. That's what he's learned, to absorb the gifts of God. Let me pray, and then we're going to move into communion. Father God, we thank you so much uh, for this day that you've created. 
God, may you inspire us today to just live in the moment, to just absorb the blessings around us. If we are with our grandkids or with our kids or with our spouse or if we're in nature or if we're whatever it is that is going on around us for us just to savor it, to savor our food more, to savor just the moment and not let our worries of the past or things that to, to rob us of what we have. Thank you so much for, for everything that Jesus has done that gives us the right and the ability to do so. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.